white flame, one finger on his lip and a dagger at the ready. He was frightfully happy. It just occurred to me that, you know, that not all boys who are lost are, are, are you know, tiny and young. Uh, that old boys, um, some of which I know very well from looking in the mirror and elsewhere, uh, are, are equally capable of being lost and zig zigzagging their way off to Neverland. And uh, when I thought that, I putting the two together, putting the notion that this is a a story about lost boys, about boys who don't grow up, who don't want to grow up, who spend their time fighting pirates and uh, redskins and uh, on a magic island, uh, that that uh, those boys are us, you know, and I we know some really good actors here in Colorado Springs that I've been working with for about three decades and uh, who I've really been just playing with, you know, kind of in the Neverland of theater for a really long time. And I thought, well, why don't we all just go to Neverland uh, with James M. Barry? Once we got the idea of an old boys sort of environment that we wanted old boys in it, it just seemed to be where do you find old boys? Where do you find very old boys, especially old boys that have fantasies or experiences of uh, fighting or playing at fighting or actually fighting. And, you know, those, those kinds of thinking led us to the idea of a Veterans Assisted Living Center. We went down to visit one um, in Florence, uh, and uh, it was kind of revelatory. It was just interesting, and it seemed like a really the ideal place to stage this because uh, it's a place where everybody inhabits, it's a place where people meet, it's where they sleep, it's where they live, you know, and it's where they dream. We do have quite a connection to our military community, and so I think it's really incredible to bring that unique part of who we are as a community to this setting and to acknowledge in some way that we have a lot of our members of our community that we don't want to have be our lost boys and men and women. And so maybe in our own special way, we're bringing a holiday message to, to remember some of those people in your life that might be somewhere um, lost in their own other world and, and maybe reach out to some of those folks. I think that's a special holiday message that's hidden in this wonderful place we call Neverland. You would have to swear down with the queen. Perhaps John had not behaved very well so far, but he's shown out now. Then I refuse. He cried, banging the barrel in front of him. And I refuse he cried, to. Michael. Rule Britannia. Then that seals your doom. Bring up their mother. Prepare the plan. We thought about Wendy. We knew we needed a girl, you know. And then it seemed to us, well, maybe we really should have a girl. And uh, uh, that would be the one person in the play who really is genuinely very young or the kind of the appropriate age. And because Mallory is a special girl and a special actress, um, we'd known her from our town. We, we asked her to come along, and uh, she was excited. And then we realized that we could get her mom, too, who is the ideal Mrs. Darling. <laughs> so we have the actual Darling family. The best part of, of being in a show together is it, it gives us this incredible time together. You know, Otherwise, we have to share <laughs> with the, the brothers and the rest of the family members. Um, so it's really, it is, it's special time together on stage and off. When Wendy returned, she found Peter sitting on the bedpost, crowing gloriously. <laughs> She's my mother. Peter explained. He does so need a mother. James said. It's funny. It's, it's a kid's story, and I think that, like, any kids who come to the show, will, uh, they'll, of course, fall in love with Mallory, <laughs> and they'll have a great time because there's sword fights, and they're, it's funny, and it's... it's it's a, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot to look at, and it's a, it's a great kid's story. But as I'm getting older, I'm, I'm realizing, wow, it's a really a story about, about getting older. You know, the boy who never grows old, well, it, you know, it's something, you know, there's, there's a part of that in each of us, you know. And so <laughs> as I get older, I, I start to feel more like and more unlike Peter Pan. So it, it's a... It's, it's actually a total mind trip. Every, every day of rehearsal <laughs> is, is mind blowing and, and this play has, uh, this story has layer upon layer of meaning for me. So it's a lot of fun. Plus, you know, you get to fly, you get to sword fight. I mean, gosh, it's great. You get to <laughs> act like you're not four years old, so it's great. <laughs> This man is mine. 
Peter Pan, when it was originally written for the stage, and it was originally uh, a play before it was a novel. When Barry wrote this in 1904, he was writing it out of a tradition, an English tradition, called pantomimes. And pantomimes are not um, French mime, not people building walls or anything like that. It, they are um, this holiday entertainment, specifically that always comes at Christmas, where they take a nursery tale and they um, jazz it up and they put it on stage. And what happens in the nursery tale, whether it's Mother Goose or Cinderella or anything else, is that there's always a villain, uh, a demon king, an ogre, a fierce, scary guy. Um, there is always a young girl and a young boy and the young boy is usually played by a girl. And they spectacular things happen in these pantomimes, spectacular goofy things, like a translation to a complete fantasy world. Well, all of this is present in Peter Pan. I mean, and, and people fly in pantomimes regularly. So Barry didn't pull this story, he pulled the story completely out of his head, but the theatrical traditions were very rich, and their traditions are these pantomimes, which are what you want at Christmas. You want magic, you, you want fantasy, you want escape, uh, you want play, you want wonder, uh, you want excitement, um, and uh, you know, you want James Bond or you want Peter Pan. And uh, we got Peter Pan. Peter Pan, the Avenger! No! Down, boys, and boys. at him! Yeah! We've always loved Peter Pan, and I just can remember, uh, even now, we always play pirates and lost boys and stuff, and I just, my brothers and I, we are, I'm always a pirate, so it's fun to be windy for a change. <laughs> and be in charge. And, yeah, that too. <laughs> um, but it's just been really cool because she's definitely always been one of my favorite characters in all the movies, and it's really awesome to actually be here now. <laughs> Perhaps, John, we don't remember the old life as well as we thought we did. A chill fell upon them and served them right. Although this is a wacky version, set in a, with old boys, set in a veterans assisted living center, it's a really pure version. It's closer to Barry than uh, Mary Martin, than Peter Pan, than uh, um, Walt Disney, uh, than really any of the other versions that you're that people mostly are familiar with, um, animated, musical, or whatever. So uh, this is actually a really people will. I hope they'll come away with wonder, realizing what a wonderful story it is and how wonderfully it's told. It's a masterpiece. It's a flat out masterpiece. And then I think that there is this opportunity, given our, our production, to have another yet another layer into this story, the layer of not only the recovery of youth and the recovery of innocence and boyhood and escape and the wish to never grow up, but also, and childhood, of course, but... but um, the loss of childhood. I mean, Barry, uh, Barry was very acutely aware of this. Even as he's escaping into childhood, he knows as an adult that childhood is something that we all lose and that we can really never get back to. So there's something really wonderful about this story and there's something really poignant about it as well. And we've restored or kept Barry's own original ending, which is completely missing from the musicals and completely missing from the cartoon because it's much more, it's much more delicate and it's more poignant. It's really very touching ending, and it is a touching ending because it brings us back into the awareness of childhood as something that we never lose, but we also never regain. <laughs>